Hello everyone, good to see you. I'm Claire Mulman here. Our website is cwowi.eu, Church Without Walls International. And of course we are located in Europe, in the Netherlands, as you can hear. I am not, my, my mother language is not English, it is Dutch. Okay, very good to see you. You can go to Facebook, to uh, YouTube videos, find a lot of more teachings. Not, a lot, uh, not um, just teachings from me, but also from other people. Go to a website cwowi.org if you want to know more about house church or um, relationship-based faith because that is what we do, what the Lord called us to do. Today I was thinking about, well, what's the purpose of church? Because, you know, we live close to a church building. People every Sunday morning we hear the clocks uh, ringing and people are called uh, to go to church and a lot of people do and a lot of people don't. So why do you go to church? What's the purpose? purpose of church. I, uh, I googled a little bit to see what the reasons are for people to go to church or not to go to church. So this was a survey some years ago and there were some reasons why people go to church. First one was to become closer to God, 81%. Uh, another one was so that their children will have a moral foundation or to become a better person or for comfort in times of trouble or sorrow or people find the sermon valuable, or to be part of a community of faith. Some people feel uh, they are obligated to go, and others go because they want to socialize and get to know new people. And some go because, and usually men, to please their, their wives or their family, their spouse or partner. That's 16%. And there are some reasons why people do not go to church. Uh, one of the big reasons, 37%, they said that they practice their faith in other ways, whatever that could be. Many think it's not important to go. What does it to do? Am I changed when I go to church or not? No, I'm not. Some don't go because they don't like the sermon or they don't like the pastor or they don't feel welcomed or they feel they don't have the time to go to church. So is it important and why should we go to church? What is church? What is church a building? Or is church, are church the people? You know, well, you probably know that God doesn't live in the building, but he lives in us. We are the temples of the Holy Ghost. But why, when did Jesus use the, the word church? The first time he used it, actually, that is in Matthew 16. From, uh, we start uh, with th uh, verse 13, because it's all one and the same uh, train of thoughts. And what happened there? It says when you probably are very much familiar with this, when uh, uh, people are, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And then they answered some say, you are John the Baptist or you are Jeremiah, one of the prophets or Elijah, maybe. And he said, but what do you think I am? And then Simon Peter answered and said, well, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, you are blessed, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of, of hell of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There's a lot, actually, what I could talk about. But, okay, let's go here. Uh, let's first, where, where it all starts with Revelation, right? Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes, and Jesus said, you are blessed, because flesh and blood people did not reveal it to you, but my Father. And reveal is the word to uncover, to reveal something what was hidden. And then he says in verse 18, and, so it's the same train of thought, and I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. Well, the Catholic, uh, um, um, they think that this rock is Peter, that they build the, uh, the church on Peter. But there are different words. Do you, the, the Lord says you are Peter, which is, uh, let me see, what is Peter? Petros, it means like... Uh, a stone, a pebble, and then you, you are just people, but on this rock, and then he says the word Petra, and that is like a, a huge, a gigant, oh, difficult word, like a like the rock of, of Gibraltar. Do you say Gibraltar? Yeah, the rock of a very big, big um, rock. 
And but what is this rock? On this rock, the rock is the rock of revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He builds his church on that revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wow, and he uses the word church here. So church in Greek is ecclesia or ecclesia. Ek is from out and uh, ecclesia comes from kaleo, which means to call. So when you ask people, what does it mean, Ecclesia, they say, well, we are called out of the world and now called uh, to God. But that's not all. There is more, way more uh, uh, behind uh, um, the meaning of Ecclesia is way more than just being called out. What did Jesus understood and what did his disciples understood that word when they heard it? What was its use in that day and age? Well, the word Ecclesia was used among the Greek as a meeting of the citizens of a city-state. In Greece, you had many city-states. They were independent, self-governed. And when they wanted to um, gather the people of that state together to conduct the business of that city-state, they called out a, a, an ecclesia. And Vine says it was used among the Greeks of a body of citizens gathered to discuss the affair of a state. So in the past here in the Netherlands and all over Europe, we had those castles, maybe you've seen them, you know, and these, those castles, they were usually in the country and the, the, the people gathered to the castle and the castles were self-governing and, and they kind of ruled. They were kind of a, a, a small kingdom, you could say. So that is actually what Jesus is saying here, Ecclesia, where those city-states, and when they had to conduct the business of the city-state, whatever that could be, it could be a wedding, a, a funeral, or what shall we do with this or that, then they gathered the people, they called out an Ecclesia. So to uh, talk about the stuff that was important for this for this city. So the word ecclesia does not mean we are called out of the world, but we are called out to conduct the business of the kingdom. And that is very important because that is what Jesus said. So when you go to church or when you do church or have church in the home, it's not just about having a nice worship. Uh, of course, that's good. It's not just about uh, meeting one another. But the most important thing is conducting the business of the kingdom. Then Jesus says in verse, um, where is it? Uh, verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you no go back to verse 18 he says on this rock on the revelation that jesus is the christ i will build my church ecclesia and he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so hell the gates of hell what are the gates the, in that time the gates were like the entrance to a city and it, it was at the gates that the people the nobles of that city they gathered together the elders of the city to talk about business stuff, to talk about things that were important. Like in the Bible, you know, uh, Boaz, he met with the elders at the city to ask permission to marry uh, Ruth. Absalom, you know, David's son, sat at the gate, and he was actually undermining his father David. Then you have Job, he had a place among the elders, the nobles at the gate of the city. So the gates of a city are where the business of the city takes place. And here the Lord talks about two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. And you know, sometimes the kingdom of darkness, Satan or his demons or whatever, they come together and they talk about, they make plans and they want to do something. But here Jesus says, when there is revelation, on this revelation uh, that Jesus is, is the Christ, I will build my ecclesia. And on that revelation, even the gates of hell, even the plans and the purpose that hell has against you or against the nation or against whatever, they will not prevail, they will not stand against it. Wow, that is amazing. And then he says in verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will read it in the Amplified because it makes much more sense and that's actually what, um, uh, what the meaning is. The Amplified Bible says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind, that is, to declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be already bound in heaven. So first of all, it is declared in heaven, this is unlawful, this is not right, this... Okay, then we must declare it to be unlawful on earth. And whatever you lose on earth, or declare lawful, or what is done or permitted, that must be what is already loosed in heaven. 
So when we talk about binding and losing, as Jesus used them, has to do with the gathering of the citizens, giving their stamp of approval or not. Say, yes, this is permitted, this is not permitted, this is allowed, this is not allowed. And why not? Because heaven says, this is not allowed. This And this is allowed or permitted. Why? Because heaven says, this is permitted. So, now you see, there's a close working relationship between heaven and between the church, the ecclesia. So, heaven giving revelation and it giving direction to its members. So revelation doesn't stop, you know, when you know that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, because everyone who comes to church, well, who is really genuine, you know, when, when you meet in homes or whatever, they each have a revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. But it doesn't stop there. There is continuous revelation from heaven about what to do, what the Father wants to do. Uh, and in practice, let's say you come together, um, you celebrate church, so to speak, in homes, because that is what we do. Well, you come together, you are there for a purpose. And it's good, of course, to fellowship and to, to catch up. And that's wonderful. But the purpose is... We are gathered here together to further the purposes of the kingdom. What does God has in mind? What does the Father want to do today? And it can mean that some person, maybe there can be a revelation. Oh, you need some prayer because I see you are going through a difficult time. Or well, someone else needs healing maybe. Or a person just needs help in his home or whatever. There can be different kind of things that those are important to God and must be important to us. So that's the purpose of why we gather, because there must be revelation. So that means that the first priority of church is to establish an atmosphere in which God can reveal what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. And the good thing is that everyone can receive revelation from heaven. That's why all the letters in the New Testament are not written, not written to the leadership at Corinth, to the leadership at whatever. No, it are called to the church at to the ecclesia at Corinth or to the ecclesia at Romans or whatever. Not to the leadership, to all the people. So that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 27, how is it when you come together, when you gather? Each of you can have a psalm or a teaching, a tongue or interpretation, meaning gifts of the Spirit, a teaching, what the Lord taught you or what you see in the Word or whatever, but everything must be done for edification. So everyone can be involved. So when you come together, it is about what does God want to do. And oftentimes I see in home, in churches and in house churches that it's, it's not about what the Father wants to do, but it's about catching up and having a good time, having a food. And that's all wonderful because fellowship is holy. But at a certain point, there must be a point that we say, okay, let's now, what, what has the Father on his mind? What does he want to do? What does he want to do today in our midst? And that is amazing because then the gifts of the Spirit flow and people are set free, are encouraged and built up. And that is what you want because it's about... Um, it's about the church, it's about the people of God, and of course it's about making disciples, because that is a big uh, business of the kingdom, making disciples, not getting people born again, but making disciples. Go then and teach all, uh, go then make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. So teaching you, teaching them, walking with them, showing them how to do that. They observe your life. And that's how they become disciples. And of course, teaching from the word, teaching what we have learned in our lives. That's actually what church is. So church is not sitting there in the pew and singing a few songs and listen to a sermon. And then afterwards having a coffee and go home. No, it's about what the Lord wants to do. And it's important. And it's even when you are two or even when you are three together, do, 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 not, do not think, wow, this is just us. What can the Lord do? How can he use us? Because when there is revelation from heaven, even the gates of hell, the plans that Satan has against someone or against a nation or what he wants to do, cannot prevail against revelation from heaven. And everyone can receive revelation from heaven. Isn't that amazing? I hope it blessed you. It blessed you. If you have questions, go to our website, cwowi.eu, and uh, there's an email, and you can email me or, uh, or contact me in any other way. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.